Pie day is coming up, and in my opinion, a single pie just isn't going to cut it. It is pie day after all, so today I'm going to show you how to make a different pie for each meal, including five different crusts, a delightful bacon lattice, and even some no-churn vanilla ice cream because the only thing that's better than pie is pie a la mode. Let's get started. I'm beginning my pie day festivities with a breakfast pie, starting by arranging a whole pack of bacon on a half sheet pan lined with foil, aiming for as little overlap as possible. This will bake in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven until cooked through but still soft, about 10 minutes. I'm frying about two cups of frozen hash browns and about a tablespoon of oil until golden and a little bit crispy on the edges. I'm setting these aside to cool while I remove three sausages from their casings and likewise frying them in some hot oil until brown, all the while breaking them up into little bits with my spatula. These also get set aside to cool. This pie is going to get a nice butter and lard crust, which starts with some all-purpose flour and a pinch of salt, into which pieces of cold butter get tossed until they're all coated, before adding a cold piece of lard and using a pastry blender to cut the butter and fat into the flour until they're about the size of peas. I'm adding some ice water in a little bit at a time until the dough just barely holds together. The flour will continue to hydrate while it's chilling in the fridge, so you want it to look almost like it doesn't quite have enough water in it. It should still be very shaggy at this point. Once the flour is hydrated just enough, Gently knead and squish the dough together, then gathering the bits of dough together roughly into a rectangle about an inch thick and folding and layering it a few times to give the crust maximum flakage. The key to a really tender and flaky pie crust is keeping it cold at every stage, so this is heading into the fridge for at least an hour before I roll it out. Now that the crust has chilled enough, I'm rolling it out to just shy of a quarter inch thick, and once a few inches wider than my pie plate, I'm carefully transferring the dough into the plate and gently easing it in. You never want to stretch dough while lining a pie plate or it might shrink while baking. Trim off any excess and fold the edges underneath, then crimp all around using the thumb of one hand between two fingers of the other. This needs to go back into the fridge for at least another 20 minutes before baking. I'm going to par-bake the crust, which just means baking it partway done without any filling. This helps keep it as crisp as possible even after it's been filled. I'm poking a bunch of holes into the bottom to prevent it from puffing up too much before lining the crust with a piece of crumpled up parchment paper. I'm using some ceramic pie weights to weigh my crust down, but you could use some uncooked rice, beans, or even sugar. The important thing is to fill the crust up all the way to the top to keep the sides from sagging down while baking. Put it on a rimmed baking sheet to catch any buttery drips before putting it in a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 minutes. Then take it out of the oven, carefully remove the pie weights and parchment paper and return it to the oven for another three to five minutes or until the bottom of the crust no longer looks shiny. To form a barrier between the filling and the crust and to keep it as crispy as possible after it's filled, I'm sprinkling a layer of grated cheese on the bottom while it's still hot. While the crust cools, I'll make the filling, starting by cracking 10 eggs into a medium bowl, adding some milk or cream, freshly cracked pepper, a nice pinch of salt, and whisking it all together until completely combined. To put it all together, I'm starting with a layer of sausage, followed by the hash browns and a couple handfuls of grated cheese, then carefully pour pouring the egg mixture over everything. Put it on a baking sheet and bake at 400 degrees until the filling looks to be about 90% done. It should be almost set but still a little jiggly, about 40 minutes. Now it's time to top the pie with a lattice made of bacon strips woven together. Then it's going back into the oven to finish baking until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean, about another 15 to 20 minutes. Let the pie cool completely before serving. Lunch will be mini taco pies with a beef refried bean and cheese filling. I'll start by browning some ground beef in a pan, adding a couple teaspoons of taco seasoning and some chipotle powder, stirring until combined, and setting aside to cool. To make the refried bean portion of the filling, I'll start by frying some diced onions until soft and translucent before adding a can of kidney beans along with their liquid and a chipotle pepper. Cook while mashing the beans until some of the liquid has reduced down. I want a smoother texture than what I can get from just mashing, so I'm putting it all into a food processor and blitzing it until almost smooth. To finish, I'll just mix the beans into the ground beef and add a couple handfuls of grated cheese. I'm making a lard crust for these pies, which is made basically the same way as the breakfast pie crust. Which is to say, cut in the fat until it's about the size of peas, gradually add in just enough ice cold water until it holds together, and layer it up to achieve maximum flakage. Chill in the fridge for at least an hour before rolling out to just over an eighth of an inch thick. Cut out rounds about three to four inches in diameter, and put about a tablespoon of filling in the center of half of the rounds. Top each one with another round of crust, press down around the edges, and crimp with a fork to seal. Put them back in the fridge for at least 20 minutes before brushing 
dusting on some egg wash and baking at 375 degrees for around 30 minutes. For an afternoon snack, I'm making some jam-filled hand pies inspired by toaster strudels from a recipe by Erin Jean McDowell I found on Food52 and have been wanting to try out. The crust gets made in a food processor starting with some all-purpose flour and salt and cubes of cold butter cut into the dough until almost completely combined. Add an egg and egg yolk along with just enough ice-cold water until it comes together. Divide the dough into two pieces before layering it to create lots of flakiness and rest in the fridge for at least an hour. Roll the crust out to a rectangle about 1 8 of an inch thick and trim down to 10 by 12 inches. Lightly mark the center at 5 inches, being careful not to cut through the pastry, and lightly mark across into thirds 4 inches wide. Brush some egg wash along all of the markings and the sides. Put about a tablespoon of jam into the middle of each marked out rectangle in one row. I'm using the plum jam I made for Ponchki Day. You can check out this video to learn how to make some yourself or just use whatever jam you want. Use an offset spatula to spread the jam up to the egg washed lines, then fold the dough over. Work out any trapped air while pressing the dough closed between each rectangle, cut them apart, and crimp with a fork. Freeze the pastries until firm for at least one hour before frying in about a quarter inch of neutral flavored oil for a minute or two on each side until golden brown. Bake in a 375 degree oven for 15 to 18 minutes. Now for what is undoubtedly the best part of any toaster strudel, the icing. Take about half a cup of powdered sugar and slowly stream in a little bit of milk or heavy cream at a time until it is pourable but still thick, optionally adding a little splash of vanilla. You can either drizzle the icing on with a spoon, or if you're feeling extra fancy, you can transfer it to a piping bag fitted with a small round tip. Pipe it onto each pastry in whatever pattern you like and enjoy. Dinner will be pizza baked in a wood fire oven, and before we can have pizza, we'll need to make some dough for the crust, ideally a day or two in advance to allow a lot of flavor to develop. You could knead this by hand, but I highly recommend using a stand mixer if you have one. Put all of the ingredients into the bowl, attach the dough hook, and knead on medium speed until smooth and elastic, about 8-10 to 10 minutes. Lightly grease a bowl at least twice as large as the dough, form it into a ball before dropping it into the bowl and covering with some plastic wrap. Leave at room temperature to rise for 3-4 to four hours before proofing in the fridge for at least another 24 hours. A couple hours before dinner, take the dough out of the fridge and divide into four roughly equal pieces. Stretch each piece around itself and roll into a smooth ball. Cover with plastic wrap and allow it to rise at room temperature until about doubled in size. In the meantime, it's still winter here so I'm going to have to clear the snow around my pizza oven before starting the fire and letting the oven heat up to at least 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the oven is ready, stretch a dough ball out on a wooden pizza peel dusted with semolina until about 12 inches wide, spread on some sauce, sprinkle on some grated cheese, and add your toppings of choice. Launch into the oven, give it a turn after 30 seconds or so, give it another 30 seconds to finish baking and voila, a wood-fired pizza pie ready for dinner. For dessert, I'm making some apple pie with a twist. But first, is there really any point in eating apple pie without ice cream? I don't think so. So let's make some easy no-churn vanilla ice cream so we can enjoy the apple pie the way nature intended. This really couldn't get any easier. Just whip up some heavy cream with a bit of vanilla bean paste or extract to stiff peaks. Put the sweet and condensed milk in a medium bowl and fold in about one third of the whipped cream to loosen it up. Fold in the rest of the whipped cream in two more additions and pour it into a container covered with plastic wrap and freeze until firm, about eight hours. Now we'll get to the filling, starting by peeling, coring, and dicing eight apples, throwing them in a pot, and tossing them in the juice of one lemon. Whisk together the sugar, cornstarch, and cinnamon, and stir it into the apples. Cook the apples over medium heat while stirring regularly until the apples have softened and their juices have thickened. Set aside to cool completely. This time I'll make the crust with just my hands, starting by tossing some cubes of cold butter into the flour, then smushing all the pieces flat before adding the ice cold water a little at a time until the dough just starts to come together. As usual, I'm folding it over itself a few times to make lots of delicious flaky layers. Divide the dough into two portions and rest in the fridge for at least an hour. Roll to about 1 8 of an inch thick, spread on some room temperature butter and rub in some cinnamon sugar. Roll it up into a tight spiral and refrigerate again until firm, at least an hour. Cut the cinnamon rolls into quarter inch thick discs, grease a pie plate and press the discs into it to form a crust. Add the filling and smooth it out. Top with more cinnamon roll discs, then return to the fridge while you preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Bake for 20 minutes, then lower the temperature to 350 degrees. Bake for another 45 to 60 minutes or until the filling is bubbling and the crust is golden brown. Cool completely before slicing. Remember that the first slice is always a disaster. Do much better with the second slice and serve it with a scoop of ice cream. 
And there you have it, a different pie for every meal of the day, the best way to make your pie day irrationally joyous. But if you're in the mood for a different kind of pastry that also uses a very flaky crust, you should check out my Tropical Fruit Danish video.